Okay, it's time for off the press. We have four dailies to look at this morning. We have the Punch, we have the Guardian, we have the Nation, and we have the leadership newspaper. Nick Agule is joining us this morning as our analyst. Nick, good morning to you. Uh, good morning, and uh, then good morning to Nigerians. Yes. And viewers. Yes, I see your color. Where are you joining us from? Abuja or India abroad? I'm joining you from Abuja, Nigeria. Very proudly good. Proudly representing our, our colors. Very proud of you, Nick. I'm sure the Federal Republic is also proud of you. Thank you. Mm. Let's start with the Punch newspaper. The Punch leads loudly with FG NLC meeting deadlocked. Workers insist on demands. The writers there. Government workers must agree on concrete resolutions within remaining days of ultimatum. That's NLC. Minister appeals to labor unions to embrace dialogue, shun strike as deadline ends on Friday. Now, that muchly anticipated meeting took place yesterday, but ended up in a deadlock. NLC's demands have not yet been met, Nick. What's your assessment of the negotiations so far? My assessment of the... I don't think the government is putting anything for the labor unions. I think the government either is buying time or just pushing the can down the road Because in all of this, as I can see today, since this current labor, I haven't seen the government do one concrete thing. The labor unions or, or alleviate the pains that have been brought upon Nigeria of government economic policies that have made cost of living to shoot up. Um, I have heard the government make promises, but I haven't seen what the, the CNG buses. Is it the palliatives? I hear that government uh, sent $5 billion to federation. But you see, five billion to a state is not enough. I'm um, of intervention. If you give people five billion today and they go to the market, it doesn't mean that tomorrow the price comes down in the market. So there are number one, the food inflation is caused. Farmers have been driven away from their farmlands. And as this government has come into, into office in May, these chiefs, we are still hearing of insecurity all over the six geopolitical zones in Nigeria. In their hands, doing something differently from the previous government. It a kid, some are from the president to say I hold that investigation. But you see, food security is guaranteed. So look at the petrol. The government is not talking about what they can do to quick them. By now, we should be talking about a community with their money to fix the families. You know? So we're not seeing anything that is concrete that will give hope that they want to address the matters on the table and the matters on the table are simple the objective is the welfare and security of the people and under this government the wealth and the security is not guaranteed so i think the government should do more do you think that uh, ministers 
Simon Lalong is um, doing a yeoman's job? Do you think? Well, to the extent, yes. Go to ahead. the extent that he's talking to the labor unions, yeah. Uh, so what I'm saying is that as regards the, the Minister of uh, Labor and Productivity, uh, Mr. Simon Lalong, uh, in terms of his performance. <clears throat> labor unions. That is what he, he needs to do. But whether those talks are effective is the next question that we are going to address. I'm convening me We're having a bit of network challenge. Uh, you know what happens sometimes when network connectivity is challenged. So um, it appears to be very very shaky this morning i hope we're able to reconnect with him hello nick can you hear me i can hear you can you hear me yes i can it's just that we're having in some sort of you know cracks when you speak and it's network it's network i'm sure anyone watching would understand that that happens sometimes but go ahead go ahead with your thoughts All right, looks like it's frozen again. All right. Yes, the network. Nick Agule. Okay, I'll just go ahead and read out the headlines and then the other headlines on the front page of the Punch newspaper. And then um, hopefully when I'm done reading them out, you would have started, um, well, we'll start hearing you again. So above the masthead, you have Nigeria serving 108, servicing 108 World Bank loans worth $14 billion. That's a special report. And then uh, right beside that, you have no easy solution to Nigeria's economic problems, says the U.S. Uh, that uh, must have been said at the ONGA, ongoing right now uh, in the U.S., in New York precisely. Our president is there right now. And uh, he'll be having uh, a meeting on the sidelines with uh, U.S. President Joe Biden. And then beside that, you have oil companies, agencies, OFG, $9.8 billion in revenue. And that's according to NATI. And looking down, you have drama as Obaseki locks out embattled deputy governor from government house. Details of that is on page 18 of the Punch newspaper. I imagine all the newspapers this morning are carrying that story. Tension as eight killed in Ogun community called clashes. Details of that you can find on pages four and five of the Punch newspaper. And then you have Obasanjo insists on stand up order to monarchs. Page seven is where you have details of that. Nick, do we have you back? Can you hear me? Okay, we are not yet um, back with Nick. So we'll go to the next newspaper, which is The Nation. The Nation leads with Atiku Obi appeals raise concern over Supreme Court cases. Panel of seven will deplete number of justices to four. And then right on top of that, you have picture of President Ahmed Tinubu and the picture of the South African president there, uh, Cyril Ramaphosa, taken yesterday at the ongoing ONGA meeting in New York. You have, okay, I understand that Nick is back. Nick, are you back? I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. I'm not enjoying this at all. <laughs> but we have to push through. Yes, the, net, the network today is not cooperating at all. At all. Okay, so uh, I'm, I'm on the, I've moved from the punch to the nation newspaper. And um, the nation leads with Atiku Obi appeals raise concerns over Supreme Court cases. Uh, you want to touch on that before we move forward? 
Yes, so uh, I can understand uh, the school of thought that uh, uh, thinks that uh, the Supreme Court has uh, some questions to answer because this Supreme Court has in the past delivered judgments that even they, the Supreme Court, uh, have had a, a hard time trying to explain. So now, now uh, the cases, the electoral uh, cases, have now moved over to the Supreme Court, and we we have to 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 focus on the Supreme Court. And when we say we want to have eyes on the judiciary, the government doesn't seem to like that for reasons that is best known to them. <laughs> they say, that's just the truth of the matter that we have all eyes judiciary. on the judiciary. Yeah, they say it's intimidating to the judiciary to be saying such stuff. It's, 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 it's just like uh, that is denying reality. That is absolutely denying reality. Because now, as we speak today, the world have their eyes on the United Nations General Assembly holding in New York. To say that the world has their eyes on the, the, the UNGA it's, it's a right statement to me because that is the happening thing now. Mm. So, uh, you know, except the government uh, or those who are against saying having eyes on the judiciary are, uh, have, have their own agenda. Otherwise, I cannot see how a justice of a Supreme Court, that means somebody who has been a judge for probably not less than uh, 40 years or more or less in, in their own lifetime, will feel pressured just because people are saying eyes are on the judiciary. It doesn't make sense to me. So well, we, we have eyes on them, whether they like it or not. That's just the truth <laughs> now. Eyes uh, the whole. <laughs> yes, Nigeria have eyes on the Supreme Court. And we, we are just asking the Supreme Court to do the right thing. If their peace come and they don't find their peace to be competent, let them dismiss it. But if they find their peace to be competent, then let them be courageous to deliver uh, justice uh, as is needed. That's what we ask for them, for the sake of Nigeria of today and of our children to come. Indeed. Well, under that headline, you have the picture of the deputy governor of um, Edo State, Shaibo, locked out of his office. He's there with his vehicle, right in front of his vehicle, in front of the gate locked um, against him. What, what, what do you make of the drama going on in Edo State? It's really beginning to look ridiculous. How do you lock out a deputy governor in a democracy outside of his office? He says he has not been officially notified of any kind of relocation of offices. So how do you see this? Um, so I went to school in Benin. I studied in Uniben. And then when I finished my first job, was in Benin as well. So, I mean, uh, when I was returned, so I went back to teach at my department at the university. So, altogether, I spent like 10 years in Benin. I consider Edo State to be my state because if it was elsewhere, I could claim indigenship of um, Edo State. So, Edo is a state I hold uh, close to my heart. Uh, there are two views here. My personal view here is that I don't like what uh, the governor is doing to the deputy. Because, you see, this deputy has been with him in the trenches. They fought themselves out of the APC into the PDP, and they have been together. And this deputy has been loyal, at least outwardly from what we can see as uh, public affairs uh, watchers. Uh, and now it has come to the point where the deputy also wants to, to, to contest for the seat of governor, and the governor doesn't want that. And the only reason I hear that they say the governor doesn't want that is because the governor says that the deputy comes from the North Senatorial District of Edo State. Uh, and Adam Sushomere was also from that uh, Senatorial District. So the governor believes that uh, after Adam Sushomere, then himself, the thing shouldn't go back to the North. He should go to another geographic zone. But I don't think that is enough reason. Uh, he should also look at the competence. If he believes that his deputy is competent enough to lead those state, we have had several cases across the country where, I mean, the same senatorial district can produce a governor in consecutive terms. It depends on all the politics. So that's my own personal view. On the other hand, you can see that this is politics playing out. This is the grand stage of mm -hmm, politics. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to politics, when it comes to politics, 
there are, as they say in politics, there's a maxim in politics that says there are no uh, permanent friends. It is only interest that is permanent. So as you can see now, uh, the friendship, the ostensible friendship that existed between governor and deputy has been thrown into the gutters. And it is about interest now. And the interest of the deputy is that he wants to become governor. The interest of the governor is that this thing should go to another senatorial district and there is a clash. And what we can see here is a fallout of the clash. And I think, uh, giving it to the governor, I think he's, he's also minding about the friendship because there are other states where the governor by now would have instigated the House of Assembly to impeach the deputy so that he will just leave the scene. But I think uh, the, the Edo State House of Assembly itself uh, is in crisis. You know, there are some members that were never inaugurated and all of that. All those kind of shenanigans that we allow these politicians to play out in Nigeria. And we see those sides doing nothing about it. At the end, we're the ones that suffer for it. Yeah. So I think time has come for Nigerians to become educated about politics. Nigerians to take their they are their future into their hands. I keep saying this thing. Those places who are Japan to, it is the people there, young, old, and the elderly, that are pushing the politicians and putting their feet to, on fire and making them to deliver good governance. Good governance doesn't come on a plateau of good. So if Nigerians really want good governance, we need to learn what is happening in the UK, in the US, in France, in Germany, where the citizens don't give politicians an inch to misbehave like this exactly. until we do that you know we're saying it's not that going to happen for we're, us we are saying same thing yesterday nyamgul and i as we're discussing um this similar issues especially as it concerns serap uh, some nigerians especially the youth make fun of setup saying oh they're always going to court how many cases have they won and we're saying we need more of setup we need more Nigerians to be actively involved in social discourse and discourses that have to do with our development. And issues, what's going on in, in Edo State, I am not particularly interested, you know, in whatever personal matters is going on between the two. What I'm concerned about is the office. The office has been disrespected and the democracy. Is it, is it, is it democratic? Is it legal for him to do this to the deputy governor? And unfortunately, you said that the House is, you know, the State House of Assemblies is not particularly put together at the moment because one would be wondering what is the best way out to clean things out? Is it impeachment? Is it what should they be doing to tidy things up so that the democracy is not being mocked in that state? That's not so uh, basically, this is a situation where a, a, every state in Nigeria is expected to have elder statesmen. Mm. And also, even if they are not from a do state, in Nigeria, you know, Nigeria, we, we have former presidents. I think if I count well, we have more than five living former presidents. We have people, traditional rulers, we have all sorts of people of influence. We can't just sit down and be looking at things like this play out. And there is no intervention, you know, from anybody, you know, to say, let it just play out the way it wants to play out. If they want to kill themselves, they let them kill themselves. We're not going to build a nation on this kind of uh, foundation, you know. So uh, I, 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 I think uh, this deputy governor could have been impeached, but I think the situation in the House of Assembly is such that Governor Basaki thinks that's not going to say true. So uh, he's, he's actually engaging in impunity disrespecting the office of the deputy governor, uh, like you have rightly said. It started by uh, totally demobilizing the media team of the deputy governor. You know, all sorts of attackations and all of that. It's not good for our democracy. Even the youth who are watching us, it's not good for them because we're teaching them badly. We're making them to see that, oh, this is normal. But this kind of thing is not normal. You know, so... Okay. There is, a, there is a, a, a revered traditional institution in a two state, and that is the Oba of Benin. Mm -hmm. You know, these are the times when he should step in as a father and call his two sons or children together and say, Look, guys, for the sake of the state and for the future of, of our democracy and for the future of our, our children yet unborn, you guys are just on stage now. Tomorrow you'll not be here. Please calm down and then do this thing in the way it should be. If the deputy governor wants to try his uh, popularity at the polls, then the PDP, 
let the governor allow him to go to the primaries. If he wins the primaries, then let him stand. But if he doesn't win his primaries, then he will know that he's not accepted by his own party to be their candidate. Mm -hmm. Why can't we just allow democracy to play out the way it's supposed to be? Without this, how can we enjoy the benefits of democracy? Where will be the dividends if we don't allow the democracy itself to function? Exactly. Now, as we're talking politics, let's look at this uh, topic here uh, on, on, the, on, on top of the masthead. You have petrol importers, power firms behind anti akbabio plot. What do you know about this anti akbabio plot? I heard about it yesterday. You are in Abuja. Tell us. Give us the full gist if, if you have it. Hello, Nick. I, I am not. Uh... Hello, Nick. Ooh, he's frozen again. Nick Agule. Nick Agule. Hello, Nick. Okay, so uh, there is this drama playing out with regards to Senate President Akbabio. We understand. Well, I understand. I heard some gist that uh, there are plots against him and um and he's saying or uh, from his people are saying that it's petrol importers power firms that are behind the plot against him i don't know the dynamics i don't know the full gist and i was hoping that nick agule who is in abuja at the moment will be able to give us the full gist of that because our ears are itching to find out what's going on with, with regards to that nick are you back Hello, Nick. Oh, wow. Okay, so um, I'll give you the other headlines here. FRS recovers 4 trillion naira tax liabilities from NNPC. Obasanjo justifies public rebuke of traditional rulers. Uh, if you follow that story, Kinley, you know that uh, some woman has come out, a woman known as Taiwo Obasanjo, uh, who says uh, he's, she's, Obasanjo's wife has tendered a public apology on his behalf, but his handlers have come out to disown him, uh, to disown her, saying uh, she's an imposter and she does not speak for former President Olusegu Obasanjo. All right, so from there we'll move to the Guardian newspaper. The Guardian newspaper leads with Nigerians bear one trillion naira metering burden as CBN World Bank backpedal. Uh, this is a special report on the front page of the Guardian newspaper. And there's a summary here. You have increases in meter prices between 2013 and 2023. If you've bought meter, uh, this electric meters, I'm sure you would identify with this report. It says here that in November 2023, the single phase meters were sold for 24,000 while the three phase was sold for 53. And it jumped in 2016, June 2016, to 44,000, you know, for the single phase and then 82,000 for the three phase. In 2021, the single phase jumped to 58,000, while the three phase jumped to 109,000. And then September 2023, this year, the single phase is now being sold at 81,975, while the three phase is at 143,836. That's what they call quantum leap. Hello, Nick. Are you back? I think I'm back. Okay. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, so now I am on The Guardian. The Guardian newspaper, the front page, that's where we are at. And we're talking about Nigerians bearing one trillion naira metering burden. A CBN and a World Bank backpedal. Uh, the Guardian has done a very beautiful breakdown of some of the issues uh from 2013 to 2023 the 
the different rates at which the meters were sold, the single phase and the three phase, and then, of course, talk to us about this. Nick, if we still have you. Yes, so, so why, why the network was fluctuating, I did hear one story uh, about the National Assembly. Uh, to, to quickly make a statement on that is that the Senate President, uh, Gosui Akpabio, knows that he's sitting on a hot seat. But the reason is that the, the, the election of the President of the Senate was a close call, very close call. He himself knows that a, an assembly that did not uh, unanimously stand behind him. So I guess he has been watching his back all this while. I mean, we keep watching uh, in due course. You know, there's a school of thought that says, um, there's a school of thought that says the head of the Southwest and the, the head of the, uh, the, the, the judicial arm of government uh, uh, and I think southwards again, and then the head of the legislative arm of government is also from the south. Are people that are saying that the three heads of government, or I mean the three heads of the arms of government, the three arms of government, that at least one of the, the arms of government should be headed by a northerner. And so, Gosu uh, Yakpabio knows very well that uh, his position is very shaky. So if we go to the electricity, electricity thing is what we have been singing about all along. Mm -hmm. This is the kind of problem we had in the United days. You know, in the United days, there were issues with phone, government kept spending money on phone, but the price of phone keep jumping up. I tell people that I sold my wife's 50,000 more than 20 years ago here in Abuja, you know, what government needs to do, and these are the things that I expected President Tinubu to be doing. We should be talking about total privatization of the electricity sector. Total. Once you do that, all this here now, they will vanish. It's just like the same problem that NITE used to put on the table for us, making all sorts of movement. We know movement all vanish when the MTNs came in. President Tinubu should just sit back. He should just sit back and look. The structural issues that are impeding the growth of Nigeria's economy, and the biggest of them is electricity. The the guys at the meters, you know, it doesn't make sense that the someone is uh, billing you and is asking you to pay for the cost of the instrument he's using to bill you. Hmm. Doesn't make sense, you know. And because the call the discos don't have, they are not capitalized enough to have the money to do these things. And President Tinubu's technical partners, or I'm going to take away these licenses from you and offer them to global operators who will come in and solve Nigeria's electricity. Mm -hmm. And meters used to be Nibu free at some point, good. right? The meters used to be free at some uh, sorry? point. Sorry? The meters, they used to be free at some yes. point. Yes. And free. this... Actually, okay, let, let us say that there is no free launch. So... Electricity company uh, spends money on metering or on meters. They are going to recoup that money somehow from the billing. Mm -hmm. But that gradual uh, mode, it will, it will be small, small that the consumer will not even notice. Exactly. Because know, these, prices are, are, these prices are just damn too high. And then this report also shows that only 50% till date, free, only uh, four discos have successfully metered at least 50%. And it summarizes by saying that this implies that over 7 million consumers are being billed arbitrarily. Okay, Nick is frozen again. with this electricity thing. This elect yes, the, 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 the Nigeria, I have, I have shown evidence back with that re evidence that Nigerian electricity consumers are even paying higher. What, what, what we pay for electricity in Nigeria that is not even 247 is far more than what we are paying for 247 electricity. The, if you look at the 
the income levels. I mean, minimum wage in Nigeria is 30,000 naira, which in today's uh, world is 30 pounds. 30 pounds. That means we're paying people one pound per day in Nigeria as minimum wage. Whereas in uh, the UK, the minimum wage is 1,250. So 1.2 million naira. So imagine somebody who is earning 30,000 naira is paying higher for electricity than someone who is earning 1.2 million. It doesn't make sense. Mm. And the only reason why we are paying this high for electricity is because this sector has not been totally... So we are paying for the inefficiencies in the sector. That's what we are paying for. If this thing is handed over the same way we handed over telecoms, we will start paying prices for, product, for, for electricity that will be there 24-7 for us. President Tinibu needs to take immediate action on privatization of the electricity sector. All right. So we, let's take a look at this headline before we leave the Guardian newspaper. Uh, 20 feared dead, seven arrested in Shagamu cult war. There's a large number of people to die in one day from cult war. What do we know about this Shagamu crisis, the cult thing going on over there? I don't know much about uh, the Shagamu uh, court walls. Uh, First, in different ways, it manifests in banditry, in kidnapping, in court, in court walls, in uh, in uh, in terror of farmers. It all it, it comes up, and it, it shouldn't matter by who or by what. Anybody who stands or poses a risk to Nigerians should be dealt with by the authorities. So you see, this is one of the areas that President Tinubu needs to work upon. He was in G20 in India the other day as we speak. He's in New York meeting uh, investors are going to come to Nigeria. Invest Avoid Nigeria like, uh, like President Tinubu needs to come to look at the entire security fundamental things you expect a president that has just taken office to do. The entire security architecture and the security architecture as we have it today protect Nigerians and investors who will come in. If the answer is no, he should reshape it. He should re and then he, he should now appoint competent people to man the reject or the retro and then you should put their feet on fire i caught what has happened now in uh, uh, in shagamu nigerians lives have been lost in uh, ogun state he has not uh, uh abi shagamu is on those state now shagamu is not you know uh be here to account in that state, who should have, with intelligence, known about this call? Being held to account. If we don't hold people to account, how do we expect them to perform? Hmm. All right, Shagamu is in Ogun State. Uh, let's move forward to the leadership newspaper, and it leads with Amid National Assembly probe. Nati uncovers $9.85 billion debt owed FG by oil firms, others. The writers there plot to stop probe thickens. Reps insist on appearance of agencies to expose complicit parties and then will take necessary action, SGF. This is big. Nick. Yes. Yes. $9.8 billion owed the issue. FG. When I saw this, uh, when I saw this report, it, the uh, CEO of NMPC Limited, uh, who uh, immediately after he increased 90 will buy to 500 and 37, I think. Uh, one of the reasons he kept saying in uh, interviews that he granted was that the federal government was owing the NMPC for a few that were important. That justified 
the hike in the price of petrol uh, because the, the federal government was owing. And then this report comes. Out of this $9 billion, $6 billion is said to be owed by the NMPC itself to the federal government. So imagine somebody who is owing you such a humongous uh, sum of money is now going to increase in petrol prices on the excuse that the federal government is owing them. But at the end of the day, you know, this is what we are saying. President Tinubu, he is in the saddle now. He should know what the big ticket items are. The big ticket items are that in Nigeria today, government revenue. Okay. Okay, so I'll read out the other headlines on the leadership newspaper. Above the masthead, you have no regret over my utterance to Oyo Monarchs. That's uh, former President Olusegun Obasanjo there. And then right beside that, you have governorship. Tribunal affirms Lawal's election in Zamfara decides on Kano tomorrow. Details of that you find on page 10 of the leadership newspaper. And then right there, you have strike. FG labor talks end in deadlock to meet again. We don't know when they will meet again, but NLC says they are open to further discussions. But whatever discussions they are having should end, should be, you know, fix this within the next four days or they are going for a total shutdown. So we're hoping that uh, something is done drastically to fix that. I'm, I'm not sure if... Um, well, I don't know what Nigerians are thinking. Do they want the shutdown? Do they not want the shutdown? I don't know. Tinubu addresses 78th anger on climate change, others today. And then I did the GSM's office, promises 18% tax to GDP ratio. Artisan gets life jail for defiling his daughters. Details of that you find on page 16 of the Guardian newspaper. And Tinubu appoints Hakim Baba Ahmed, 17 others, as Shatima's aides. Uh, that's uh, the older brother of the uh, vice presidential candidate of the Labour Party, um, Ahmed Dati. Uh, Baba Ahmed, uh, his older brother, has been appointed as, as an advisor, especially to the vice president, Shatima Kashim. And uh, many Nigerians are saying, aha, there you have it. And he accepted. <laughs> Hello, Nick, are you still there? Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you right now. The network today has, has not given me any joy at all. The network is pretty bad. It's just fluctuating up and down. I don't even know. It's a wicked network. All right, so let's talk about... Um, Hakim Baba Ahmed, that is older brother, accepting this appointment. Okay, well, um, the, there are two different individuals, as we have seen in Nigeria, even with the Saraki days. Mm. Uh, uh, I think uh, the elder the brother uh, was in a, in a different party, and the, the the sister was in a different party. I think at the time the sister was a minister in one party, and the other brother was holding sway as any president in another party. So these are two different individuals. Mm -hmm. They are both allowed to belong to any political groups as they would like. They would like to. So I don't think uh, uh, the, the the senior the, the senior brother to the vice presidential candidate of the Labour Party accepting a position of special advisor in the office of the vice president he has, he has done anything wrong if he believes he has something to contribute to the growth and development of nigeria let him go and give it and the brother has his own cause that is following so uh I, 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 for me my personal opinion is that i don't see an issue here okay let's go back to this issue we're discussing before you had that uh, disruption uh, this Navy uncovering $9.85 billion debts owed FG by all firms, others, and the plot to stop this probe is thickening. Well, these are the, these are the areas that I expect President Tinu 
able to be focusing on. You know, the exchange crisis, like we say, the exchange rate crisis can be solved by only two things. Number one, increase the dollar supply into the Nigerian economy. Number two, reduce the demand for dollars. And so if you look at the increasing the dollar supply to the economy, these are the big ticket, low hanging fruits that the president needs to be focusing on. There are uh, the likes of the NMPC and other OA companies in Nigeria that are not remitting what they should be, they should be uh, putting into the treasury of Nigeria. They are not doing that. And it, it will only require the president <coughs> committing like half an hour of his time by inviting all the heads of the OA industry uh, operators in Nigeria, downstream, uh, upstream, midstream, to his office. And within 30 minutes, raise the riot act to them and say, guys, I know that there are monies that you should be paying into Nigeria treasury that you have not paid. Go back and pay the monies within so, so, so uh, length of time. If you don't do that, I will withdraw your operating license and you will depart Nigeria, you will not have business again. These are the kind of things you expect the president to do. And this $9 billion, I can assure you, will enter the coffers of the, of the Treasury of Nigeria in no time. You know, it's the same president who is watching the, the stealing of the crude oil. If he reads the riot act to the security chiefs and say, allow one barrel to be stolen, and you are going home to your house. Mm -hmm. You know, one million uh, barrels of crude oil will be saved, which at today's price is ninety million dollars. Ninety times thirty days is two point seven billion dollars. That's the kind of thing that will deal with the supply issue of the exchange rate crisis because more money will now be coming in, and the president will have money to start his development agenda for Nigeria. Otherwise, this junketing around the world in the name of looking for investors, how will they come if the house is not being put in order? That's a very big question. In fact, uh, a trillion dollar question. And before we wrap up, talk to us about uh, former President Olusegun Obasanjo and uh, what he did in Oyo State and what uh, the woman who says she is his wife did, you know, tendering an apology on his behalf and his, his handlers rejecting her and saying she's an imposter. She's not speaking for uh, the former president and the former president stands by what he did and what he said. I, I, I personally don't have any love for President Obasanjo. That's my own personal view. I actually think that uh, we're very unlucky to have President Obasanjo as the first runner in this relay, in this democratic uh, or democracy relay that we are doing now. Because he basically destroyed the tenets of democracy when he was in office for eight years. You see, the democracy is built on certain pillars. And one of them is the independence of the, the, the judiciary. And President Obasanjo will not go after judges, or judges make rulings, judgments. And then his attorney general will interpret it in his own way. And they will just disregard it. Uh, the, the next pillar of democracy is uh, the independence of the legislating arm of government. And Mr. Obasanjo was the one that will be removing and, and, and installing, uh, uh, you know, members of national, I mean, I mean, leaders of national assembly will go to a state assembly and use like five members out of 23 to impeach a governor, you know. All those kind of shenanigans plus electoral, the other pillar of democracy is the sanctity of the electoral process. And Mr. Obasanjo in, in 2003, he destroyed everything elect, election in Nigeria in his bid to to, to be re-elected for the second time and for Southwest to, to vote his PDP and all that. So he is responsible for the problems that we are facing in this democracy because what he did, we are still trying to fix it to, to today. We can't fix it. So he was in power for three years as a, a military head of state and then for eight years as a civilian head of state. A total of 11 years. What will President Obasanjo today say he has solved in Nigeria that is still standing today? Is it electricity, where he said to have spent so much billions of dollars that we can see today? Is it agriculture? Is it security? Security? Is it infrastructure? Is it education? Is it healthcare? And then he will just come and be doing this uh, obasabi, trying to. You know, he was there for eleven years. He couldn't deliver. We are not trying to talk to people who are in power. For me, 
I don't have any love for President Obasanjo at all. And I just think that he should just relax and be this time as an elder statesman because this holier than thou attitude and all this, uh, uh, you know, uh, comments that he drops here and there. Why did he not do it when he was there for 11 years? Mm -hmm. And he hasn't written a letter in recent times. So probably be getting a letter before the end of the year from him. Yeah, he's uh, yes, you are very correct. He 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 was there for 11 years. He he didn't deliver much, and then he comes out and he's he's doing holier than thou by writing letters. Why did he not write letters to himself and deal with Nigeria, Nigeria's problems? And today we'll be saying. The electricity we enjoy today is President Obasanjo that gave it to us. The university education today that is, 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 is world class is President Obasanjo that gave us today. The healthcare institution who can point this and there and say, these are Obasanjo hospitals that he gave us. Nothing. 11 years down the drain. Please, let him take a break. Yeah, well, I do love him though. Nick Agule, thank you for your time. Thank you very much, and uh, uh, Nigerians have a, have a nice day. Nick Agule, public affairs analyst, has joined me on Off the Press. Well, we'll be taking a break right now. We'll come back with our first hot topic. Labor had a meeting with the federal government yesterday. I want to take a look at that. Stay with us. <laughs>